Hello. So the work I'll be sharing with you today is called the Abyssinian Cyber Vernaculus. It's a series of visual narratives and virtual reality experiences um, that unfold over the rock hewn churches of Lalibela in northern Ethiopia. This work was born from an exercise of imagination, or rather reimagination, an exercise that materialized in order to bypass the nefarious hegemonies surrounding my Ethiopian heritage um, that have not only frustrated me in my endeavors towards inquiring deeper into histories and imagining beyond the given, but have also effectively barred the black subject from contributing to the canon, claiming space and determining the futures. Furthermore, this work attempts to uncover and reinstate the presence of those marginalized and maligned by the dominant conservative ethos of contemporary Ethiopian society, while pushing up against apocryphal stories of Africa. Through immersive storytelling and myth-making, the Abyssinian cyber vernaculus activates the existing architecture of the site through three parallel narratives constructed around the perspectives of the self-proclaimed experts um, of Lalibela. The three engineers of hegemonic narratives are the Western academic, um, or the white savior, uh, portrayed by um, a spoof of Indiana Jones called Kentucky Johnson, um, the conservative Coptic Orthodox Ethiopian man, represented by Johannes the Faithful, um, and lastly, we have Sebi the Hotep, which is lo loosely defined as a pro-black yet socially conservative cisgendered male. Um, in each instance, the player assumes the role uh, of one of these heroes in VR and drives the narrative forward, ultimately, go un ultimately going on an unexpected journey of unlearning. Historically known as Roja, the town of Lalibela was the royal capital of the Zagwe dynasty, which reigned from the 10th to the 13th century. The complex is made up of 11 churches carved from a single living rock of basalt, a, a soft volcanic rocky massive. The churches are an active site of pilgrimage and worship for Ethiopian Christians, and the site became the first landmark project of the World Monument Fund after the organization's foundation in 1965. Um, later officially designated a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1978. Since then, Lalibela has become a focus of global tourism and international conservation efforts. As the Hegelian myths that treated Africa as ahistorical and external to modernity informed Western worldviews, conservationists and institutions in the global north presumed authority over African cultural production. Africans were not believed capable of correctly preserving their heritage. As such, nations like Ethiopia are still striving for the repatriation of artifacts looted from churches and palaces. For me, nothing in popular culture supports this sentiment more than Indiana Jones's famous catchphrase, it belongs in a museum. Whose museum and says who? Indiana Jones has spawned an endless array of fictional tropes where the hero uh, where the heroic white adventurer races across the world, risking their lives uh, to retrieve ancient relics from ethnic um, and exotic places where they encounter other racial stereotypes. Indiana Jones and the world he inhabited became the starting point for my um, critical world building. What would Indiana Jones do in the context of Lalibela? How would the priests and deacons of the church react to his antics when they're already so easily dismayed by any young person walking into the church without proper attire or the required level of piety? As you can see, like, as you can see with this um, dismay on the priest here. I set out to build this first VR experience by subverting tropes of traditional gameplay and weaving humor and satire into the character's dialogue. The player learns of their mission to retrieve the seven kilogram Afro Aigba gold cross through Kentucky's internal dialogue. The game relies on the player's preconceived expectations of gameplay to deceive them into believing that they can advance through the game by collecting objects. However, this quickly leads them to a moral dilemma when they reach the main, the main objective and Kentucky's inner voice argues to take it to a museum where it belongs while the church members warn the player not to loot the church. When it comes to myth, Lalibela is a place steeped in it. 
to the extent that its legend takes precedence over scientific research or any new findings. According to legend, um, a swarm of bees encircled a young Lalibela at his birth. Their appearance indicated a prophecy that Lalibela was destined to be king. The angel Gabriel came to visit him in his youth in a vision and carried him on his wings to the heavens where he saw the 10 Rokuan churches. There he realized it was his destiny to construct a new Jerusalem for his people upon earth. During his reign, Lalibela enlisted the help of hundreds of workers to carve away at the bedrock. For each cubit a worker dug by day, an angel would descend to dig three cubits by night. The construction of the churches were, was therefore apparently completed in under 24 years. The king, now a venerated saint of the Tawahido Orthodox Church, was allegedly buried in a tomb inside Beta Golgotha Mikhail, co commingling myth with bone and earth and becoming the namesake of the city now known as Alibela. Experts studying the construction anomalies have suggested that the churches may have been completed through a phased construction over centuries and may have in fact been intended as a fortified royal residence. One of the peculiar things about the site is the missing debris. Often monolithic sites have mounds of excavated debris nearby or on site. However, experts have not been able to locate the debris. Uh, in recent years, they've been using satellite imagery to recognize spoil heaps and have since excavated a domestic dwelling that may date back to the 10th century. This opens up a whole floodgate of questions on the origins of the churches. Archaeologists have also pointed to the evidence of the presence of other groups, such as potentially ambassadors from the Gupta Empire in India, which, ind which is indicated by the symbolic windows, um, symbolic windows on the face of Beta Mariam, as well as metallic shields embedded in the, sh in the ceiling of its interior. Raising any such questions during a tour, however, um, is met by swift dismissal and is sometimes even regarded as heresy. So the intent behind my second narrative is to weaken the potency of this myth by devising one that can prove to be its antithesis. I worked through a process, process of myth-making where I could imply plausible yet fictional alternatives, allowing for a multiplicity rather than the singularity of the per persistent myth of Lalibela. It was a practice of counter-memory and a sort of intentionally disruptive heresy. The new myth claims that the last ruler of the Aksumite um, Empire enlisted the help of the guild of Tahanesi, an imaginary ancient guild made up of members of various empires. The guild was responsible for the construction of other iconi iconic monoliths all over the world as well. They achieved these impossible tasks through the use of mechanized carving machines and hand tools. As the symbolism of Lalibela's churches and the monotheistic and imperial nature of their lore is further sedimented into the homogenized concept of Ethiopianism, a national identity hinged on Ethiopian exceptionalism, the myth for me becomes increasingly important to combat. The Abyssinian Empire has been widely regarded as a symbol of black sovereignty and triumph over colonization by the afro diasporic community globally. Yet this not only sanctifies monarchs and r romanticizes their legacies, but it also allows the dominant culture to avoid a reckoning with the violence of its past. During this critical moment in our political history, when a war rages on for over 15 months, truth has become askew, ghosts of rulers' pasts are conjured as a way to wage nationalism and male bravado, silent compliance is violently enforced, so a confrontation with Ethiopia's imperial past and its resulting social injustices is urgently needed. The Horn of Africa in general has a long history of fierce and ruthless queens whose stories have now either been eroded, sanitized, or skewed. The biblical queen of Sheba, Nigis Saba, is said to have ruled over ancient Abyssinia extending to Yemen. In Ethiopia, the Solomonic dynasty draws its lineage from Nigis Saba and King Solomon subsuming her character into imperial Christian imagination. In other versions, um, Saba uh, is also referred to as Bilkis, a goddess in her own right, or the daughter of a jinn, or a seductive demoness. Other powerful women of history from the region include Queen Yodit, who set a blaze to the kingdom of Aksum uh, and dismantled it, Queen Fura of Sidama, and Queen Aruela of Somalia. 
In my search for one, I ran into the other, their identities conflated with each other. So rather than entangling them from each other and drawing out one true benevolent version from all these disparate identities, I settled for creating a many-faced god hidden in the shadows of history but never powerless. The Ethiopian Oromo goddess Atete, who rules over the fate of people on earth, presides over the Zar. In this tradition, Zar can commune with humans and offer them advice through a host during a trance. And the practice of communing with Zar and spirit possession is seen across Sudan and Egypt as well. However, in other belief systems throughout Ethiopia, um, Zar are often seen as malevolent spirits that, that are responsible for socially unacceptable behaviors um, such as a non-masculine man or a willful and assertive woman and must be purged or cast away rather than accepted or appeased. To me, this appears as a sort of coded identity to conceal the true nature of certain groups among conservative societies. The Zar in the VR experience are conjured by the unnamed goddess. as she calls forth those who've been banished to non-existence by patriarchy and religion. Here we'll have um, a short clip from inside the virtual world of the Abyssinian cyber vernaculars. Ah, would you get a load of this? The medieval churches of Lalibela, eighth wonder of the world. 11 churches carved from a single rock. <sighs> okay, Kentucky, stay focused. You're here to recover Afro Aegba, the seven kilogram gold cross of King Lalibela. It's one of the most powerful spiritual devices in the world. Hey, mister, I can show you around. I know my way around all the churches. Oh, boy, this would be worth a pretty penny on the black market. Appa, did you say Hush, that? Now come. Don't make us. Let my nyam just keep an eye on him from a distance. The cross must be just beyond that pillar. Wait! What are you doing? You can't go back there. It's forbidden. I need to get that cross. I have to take it to a museum where it belongs. A sigh. I've been dreaming of coming here my whole life. You must have heard the legend of Nugus Lalibela before, no? He carved this church from a single rock himself, who's only the hope of the angels of heaven, in just 24 years. Are you just going to stand there listening to this man tell the same story you've heard all your life? Come with me if you seek answers. Arab Amara? What kind of sorcery is this? The guild was a group of anonymous skilled artisans from around the world. They specialized in rock-cut architecture, an incredibly arduous and nearly impossible feat of chiseling temples, castles, cities even, from bedrock. Salam stranger, grab a tool and join us. We need all the help we can get. Salas AI, the road to Zion has been one long one indeed, Cha. But I'm here at last, Lali Bella, the promised land. For how hard they tried, for how much they despised me, they cannot destroy me. I am what, the energy in all things, the entropy after death. I lurk in the shadows they banish me to and strike when I see weakness. No man's kingdom is made to last, especially those built on bloodlust and greed. Neither they nor you can ever be rid of me. I am the brightness in your skin, the sunlight you absorb. I am your beating heart and your blistering dream. So my work began as a series of comic books, yet I immediately wished to move the narrative into a more expansive, non-extractive medium that would allow for an audience to be immersed in the disjointed saga um, and dwell within a space that for most is too distant, difficult to navigate, or impossible to access due to its present conditions. 
while virtual reality is still an emerging media that is um, not yet fully formalized and institutionalized, I see it as an unclaimed territory for black emancipatory imagination and a vital tool for self-representation for the othered, rather than just a popular um, entertainment commodity. It creates the opportunity for virtual embodiment where the player can assume the identity of a character and maintain some agency by controlling their movements um, and actions, yet gain no control over the character's thoughts, words, or prejudices. This leads to complex moments of resistance um, and complic complicity as well as confrontations and consequences of actions in a world with a different set of rules to our own. Virtual reality can be a space for experimental conservation of heritage sites. The conservation effort here is not intended to be neutral or produce an exact facsimile of the object, but rather is a sort of digital mediation that counters erasure by preserving a certain version of the object imbued with certain meaning, with enough breadth to allow for multiplicity and varied interpretations. With the support of the Graham Foundation in 2020, I've been able to work towards developing the next iteration of the project. I've continued my process of spatial interpretation and digitization following a recent visit to La Libella, and I plan on producing an exhibition that blurs the boundaries between this virtual world and physical space. Design is ultimately a mechanism of self-affirmation, a method of driving preferable futures and worldviews, and as blackness has been historically banished to the margins, the realms of the exotic, the unknown and unknowable, the politics of design and space making emboldens us to reinforce black subjectivity and claim uncharted territories, asserting and centering ourselves in multiple futures. Thank you.